What's up, fellas? Have you ever wondered if it's possible to get shredded without counting calories? Well, I had this same thought as well. So I ran a bit of an experiment, okay? And I'm confident that this will work for anyone. Any person, if you whether you're an average guy or you've got below average genetics, as you can see here, I don't have the best genetics, okay? So this will work for everyone. This is how I got shredded without counting calories, okay? Back in 2022, this is the leanest I've ever been, actually, okay? So in this video, I'm gonna share exactly what I did, how I ate, what my day looked like, what my training was like, uh, the exact meals that I ate. I'm gonna share everything with you, but I do not recommend you do this, okay? Do not try this at home, fellas. Uh, we can pull some ideas and there's gonna be some takeaways and we can take inspiration from this, but I do not recommend that you try this for reasons that I'll explain at the end, okay? So here's the before and after pictures. This is January 2022. This is March 2022. So we're looking at about eight weeks apart. Here I'm probably around 14, 15% and here about seven or 8%, okay? Um, now, if you're looking at this first picture, this before picture, and you're thinking, oh, well, I'm not that lean, uh, that's actually good news because the leaner you get, the harder it is to lose body fat. So the fatter you are, the easier it is to lose body fat, okay? Because once you get down, it's a single digit body fat. Your body really doesn't want to pull that fat off. It's trying to hold onto uh, body, store body fat for as much as possible in case there's a period of famine, right? So it's basically body fat is just stored food. It, it, that's how your body looks at it anyway. It's stored energy. So your body really doesn't want to get down this lean. So the leaner you get, the harder it becomes. So let's dive into it, okay? Well, I just wanna say, before we do, that this is for extreme fat loss only, okay? This is not for building muscle. This is not for productivity. This is not for health. Uh, this is, you know, purely for extreme fat loss only and should be done in a short time frame. okay? We do not wanna be doing this long-term either, okay? So my routine, I'd wake up around six, obviously have a shower, go outside, get some morning sunlight and have a coffee around 6.30. I'd have my first coffee around 6.30, okay? Do a bit of work and then at around 9.30 is when I do the first workout. I'm gonna explain what workout one, workout two and the meals and uh, the, the slides in a second, okay? So I'd do the first workout around 9.30, come back around 11, uh, have another coffee, and now I wouldn't eat until around two, okay? So by two o'clock rolls around, I am absolutely starving. I have meal one around two, and then around six, uh, sorry, around four, I would do workout two, and then around six, I'd have meal two, and I put nine o'clock for the, what time I was in bed, but honestly, sometimes it was much earlier maybe it's like 7 30 8 p.m uh, i was just so tired from so much of a calorie deficit and so little food and uh, so much training that i was i was ready to sleep around eight o'clock to be honest okay so uh, i'm basically having two coffees a day uh, two workouts a day and two meals a day it's very simple but uh, the workouts were not simple, at least not this one anyway. Uh, so workout one, this is at 9.30. This is a high intensity class, okay? High intensity group workouts where you're either with a partner or you're in a group and it's around 40 to 50 minutes nonstop uh, doing like uh, circuit-based uh, exercises. Assault bike, skier, runs, farmer's carries, wall balls, burpees. Uh, you know, obviously it's cardio with a bit of muscular endurance mixed in. But uh, these workouts were tough, very, very tough, but so rewarding afterwards, okay? So that would be the first workout around 9.30, probably burning, I mean, obviously I wasn't tracking anything, but at least 500 to 600 calories, probably a bit more, to be honest. Um, so, so some of the harder workouts, maybe it's close to a thousand calories that burning just purely in that first workout alone and I haven't eaten anything yet. Okay. So then I would have another coffee. Meal one would be around two. And like I said before, uh, by this point, I'm absolutely starving, but I would have pretty much the same thing every day. So I'd go to the same restaurant. I'd order four boiled eggs and I'd have boiled because boiled is more satiating than any other type of eggs that you want to eat. Boiled will just fill you up more. So if you're gonna have eggs and you're on a cut right now and you wanna feel full, boil your eggs. That's a little hack to, uh, to just to feel more full and feel more satiated, okay? Uh, I'd have around 300 grams of chicken breast, some raw carrot, and that would be pretty much it for meal one, okay? Uh, then around four o'clock, I would do workout two. 
And this is where I go and hit the weights, okay? And this would be like a modified push-pull leg split. But it would really depend on whatever, you know, muscles were least sore. Because I was doing so much activity and especially from the hit classes, a lot of my body was getting worked every single day. So I kind of had to work uh, my weight sessions around whatever muscles were not too sore to train, okay? But the workouts were never more than an hour, usually around 40 to 45 minutes, I'm not going super heavy either as well, around a, like a 10 or 12 to 15 rep range. Short rest periods, uh, but the goal was to kind of like work the target muscles without placing too much extra stress on the body because already I'm already doing a lot of movement, right? Uh, meal two, around six. This is a little bit more varied than meal one, but compared to most people, uh, you're still probably going to think this is extremely uh, boring. But go back to the same restaurant. I would have four eggs again, boiled or scrambled. Scrambled for a change, just to mix it up. Around 100 to 300 grams of beef and or 100 to 300 grams of chicken. I would just, uh, some days I would have more beef than chicken. Some days I would only have beef and no chicken. Some days I have a bit more chicken than beef. It just really depends just going off how I felt to be honest usually more chicken than beef though because I've already had chicken for meal one uh, some more raw carrot again and sometimes I'd have white rice like maybe once or twice a week uh, I would just have about 200 grams of white rice with this meal as well uh, again this wasn't planned this is just going off how I felt and you know what I wanted to do at that time uh, nutrition extras, uh, like I was saying, I was having uh, two coffees in the morning and this really helps suppress the appetite, boost the metabolism and uh, provide energy for the morning workout. Okay. Uh, I also found that, um, you know, I don't really get that hungry in the mornings compared to the evenings. And especially if I have a coffee, it really helps, uh, you know, kill any hunger that's there. I would have some snacks as well, but the only snacks I had during this time is fruit pretty much. And uh, in Thailand, the fruit uh, is absolutely amazing. It's like the best place in the world for fruit. Uh, so I was having a lot of tropical fruits like pineapple, papaya, watermelon, bananas, dates, etc. And I would either have them after meal one, meal two, or sometimes after both meals. So I'm still getting a little bit of extra carbs there as well. Uh, cheat meal, this wasn't planned, but like once every once or two weeks, uh, I would go and get a massive pizza. It wouldn't even fit in this uh, <laughs> in this window here. It was a huge, like, I don't know, 30-inch pizza or something like that. And just absolutely destroy that. Or I go to this all-you-can-eat sushi place, and oh, it would be an absolute demolition. Honestly, afterwards, I'd be just looking down at my stomach. I'm like, how is it possible that my stomach is that big? But uh, I would only do that you know, once every one or two weeks as kind of like a refeed. Uh, and that was definitely something that I look forward to. Okay, so let's break down first of all, why did this work? Well, the most obvious reason why this works is I'm an extremely large calorie deficit, okay? Two workouts and two only two meals per day, okay? And I've also gone from before this, I was doing no cardio whatsoever and suddenly I'm doing to like 40 to 50 minutes of high intensity cardio. And before I was having probably three or four meals a day and I've just cut my meals down to two. So at the beginning, I saw extreme fat loss. Like every single day I was waking up noticeably leaner at the beginning. Uh, but I'm going to stress that's only at the beginning. Okay. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, like the gyms were on the same street as to where I was, where I was living. Um, the restaurant was on the same street as where I was living. Everything was just on one street. I didn't even need to leave the street if I didn't want to. There's no overthinking. Every day was the same, except I was just doing some kind of little bits, different exercises. Meals were very similar. You know, there's not much thought. I just had to wake up, stick to the plan and just continue with the plan and don't mess up. Okay. It, it was also very doable for me at that time in my life. You know, I was probably only working four or five hours a day. I couldn't work anymore actually. And that's something that I'll talk about in a second. Probably couldn't do any more work than that, uh, given this kind of workload. So this might not be doable for everyone, but obviously we can just pull some of these ideas out and uh, implement them into your own protocol. Uh, sleep was on point. Uh, there was not really any stresses going on in my life. Uh, sleep was extremely dialed in, sleeping very well every single night. So obviously that helped a lot. Uh, the coffee, like I mentioned, will help suppress the appetite, increase the metabolism, made it easier to go until two without eating anything. 
Uh, no processed foods. Obviously, that's going to make a big difference to overall digestion and health and everything like that. And I think during this time period, I only had one night out. So I did have one night out and it was pretty late one. I drank a lot of alcohol, felt awful for days afterwards. So my routine was pretty dialed in. Uh, I was pretty consistent. Uh, and you know, with such a large calorie deficit, of course it's going to work. But if it's, if it works so well, then why is it a bad idea? Well, first of all, I probably lost some muscle mass. Okay. I, I I've shown you the two pictures, which are eight weeks apart. I actually did this for 12 weeks, but the last four weeks pretty much made no fat loss progress whatsoever. If anything, I might have lost a little bit of muscle, okay? So that's something to bear in mind is if you are gonna do something like this, you wanna do it in a short time frame, not a long time frame, okay? Also, this is not sustainable for most people. It wasn't even sustainable for myself as well. So um, that's why it's probably not a good idea to, uh, to implement something so drastic, but obviously, you know, I was running an experiment. I just wanted to find out for myself, how, you know, what would happen. And very quickly, I hit a plateau. Okay, so at the beginning, um, you know, progress. Let, let me see if I can draw, show you what my fat, at the beginning, my fat loss, right, was extremely fast. It looked like this, but very quickly, it would have started to level out. Okay, and then I'm not making any progress. And at this point, where do I go? Because I'm already doing two workouts a day. I'm already only having two meals a day. My calories are super low. My expenditure is extremely high. Where do I go from this point? I'm already, you know, kind of suffering. My quality of life suffering. Uh, I'm not, I can't really work that many hours, you know, three or four or five hours maximum. Uh, I don't really want to do anything because I'm so tired all the time. Uh, so, you know, and the whole reason I got into, you know, the gym and getting in shape is because I wanted to improve my quality of life and actually got to the point where it was taken away. So that's something that's not often talked about. And if you're not at like single digit body fat, it's not something you really need to worry about, but just know once you get down to these, uh, low body fat percentages for some people, it's not going to be possible for you to stay, sustain long term. All right. So. Uh, it's a bad idea because I reached a plateau and I didn't have anywhere to go. A much smarter approach would have been to uh, take a more gradual approach instead of just implementing, you know, cardio, uh, lots of cardio off the bat and cutting my meals so drastically. If I'd have just reduced the food that I was eating slightly over time and just gradually increased uh, the cardio that I was doing over time, um, you know, fat loss would have been more gradual but it would have, we would have been able to sustain it for much longer. And I probably would have got down to an even better condition. I probably would have got down even leaner. Uh, and that's essentially what I'm trying to do this time around. Uh, I'm taking a much more gradual approach uh, to get lean. And I'm also not doing three meals a day. Uh, sorry, two meals a day. I'm doing three meals a day. So we'll see. We'll see. But I'm pretty confident that I'm on the right track to uh to be in much better condition, albeit slightly bigger this time. Okay, so what are the takeaways? Let's get rid of this. Uh, takeaways are intermittent fasting can help adhere to a calorie, can make it help adherence to a calorie deficit easier. So if you are struggling right now to stick to your diet or you're struggling to get your calories low enough, you can try intermittent fasting. And what intermittent fasting is, essentially, is where you eat all your calories within a certain time frame. okay? So for me, it was between two, right, and six. So I just have four hours here where I'm eating, and outside of these hours, I'm not consuming any calories or very minimal. I might have some calories in my coffee, like because of the milk or something, but almost no calories outside of two and six, okay? Um, so that's gonna make it so much easier to stick to a calorie deficit because you've just got a shorter window where you can actually consume food. And you just, the fewer meals you have, the less chances you have to mess up, okay? Because every time you eat a meal, you essentially have an opportunity to screw up and go over your calories or whatever. So you can reduce the amount of meals that you eat and you can try and con compress your calories into a shorter window and that's gonna help um, 
you know, stick into a calorie deficit easier. Also, if you add coffee in with this, especially coffee early in the day, not late in the day, because it's going to affect your sleep. But uh, coffee can help suppress appetite and uh, also boost metabolism as well. So that's going to help. Another takeaway from this is that fat loss is better if you take a slower, more gradual approach. Like I just talked about before, uh, it would have been a much smarter approach for me to uh, to do this gradually over time rather than just go flat out from the beginning. Okay, and another takeaway, excuse me, is that fitness classes make cardio fun. So if you're a beginner or if you struggle with motivation or you don't know what to do at the gym or you really just want to get started but you don't really know where to start and the gym is quite daunting for you, see if you can find some good fitness classes. Now, they need to be good. And if you're a beginner, you're probably not going to know what's good ones and bad ones, but uh, you're just going to have to try some classes and see if you can find some good ones in your area. But if you can find some good fitness classes in your area, they're extremely beneficial. Like for example, for myself, I can't think of anything worse than just being sat on the bike in the gym or on the treadmill, uh, you know, doing low intensity, steady state cardio. For me, it's just so boring. I don't mind going for a walk outside, uh, but to do some proper cardio, the only way uh, I can enjoy it is if I'm playing a sport or doing some kind of these fitness classes. These classes, you're in a group setting, it's a little bit competitive, you've got other people around you. It's very easy to be uh, motivated uh, if you're, when you're in a group setting, okay? So that's the takeaways. Last thing, oh, that's left over from last time, is go out there and get shredded guys okay so implement some of these things i hope it helps obviously you know don't just blindly copy this but take inspiration from this if you're trying to get lean right now and you don't want to count your calories just know it is possible but you have to be absolutely certain that you're burning a lot more calories uh, than you're consuming okay and it really is that simple uh, by the way, I do coaching. So if you want some help with this and you want someone to put a plan in place for you where that is sustainable, long-term, that gets results quick, but it's also something that you can stick to given your current work commitments and lifestyle and stuff like that. That's also an option. And if you like videos like this, I've got a free course. Uh, you can join down below. The, link, the links are in the description. And other than that, guys, go out there and get absolutely shredded to the eyeballs and I'll catch you in the next one.